Well, that was good. Well, that was a movie. Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I'm giving my first thoughts on The Night House, which is the new horror film starring Rebecca Hall. In case you don't know what this film is about, it follows Rebecca Hall's character shortly after her husband commits suicide. She's now alone in her house, but is seemingly haunted by his ghost or memory. There's also different things about mirrored houses and realities, but I don't want to give anything away. I'm just going to say, if you, like me, watched the trailer and thought, I know the plot now, this trailer gave away too much and I know everything that's gonna happen. It didn't. <laughs> you don't. It's actually a wonderfully made trailer because it does a great job of showing you enough to make you intrigued and even seemingly showing you a lot more than it does. But there's so much more going on than what you see in the trailer and I really appreciate that. Uh, but I don't want, like I said, to give anything away so I'm going to leave it at that as far as talking about the plot. So I'm just gonna try and talk about this movie uh, from a filmmaking and acting and writing standpoint, this movie was so, so good and so much better than I expected. I went into it thinking that there was a good chance I was going to enjoy it, that it was going to be a fringe top 10 movie. I kind of was reminded watching the trailer of the 2020 The Invisible Man movie, which everybody freaked out about, everybody said was really good. And as far as modern horror goes, it was pretty good but I wasn't really that impressed by it. The needle wasn't really moved that much for me and I thought this was going to be about as good as that. It was, at least in my opinion, way, way better than that. This to me, as of right now, is in my top five movies, not ten, five movies of this year. Uh, maybe even top three. I really really enjoyed this movie. It's hard to talk about without getting into the plot and into spoilers, but what I will say is uh, this was a very interesting idea. It's not just your standard horror jump scare type plot. There's a lot more going on here. It's almost kind of like The Babadook. Not quite as good as The Babadook. The Babadook was fantastic. It's one of the best horror movies in the past 10, 20 years. It is a fantastic movie. This is good and it reminded me of The Babadook in ways, the way that it was written, the way it was executed, but I would still say The Babadook is in a slightly different category, but that doesn't take anything away from this movie. This movie was really good. I loved the story. I loved loved the meaning behind it. I, I do believe personally that there are some allegorical messages here and I loved all the implications. I thought that it was, I was gonna say original and I struggle with saying that a little bit because a lot of this movie did feel cliche. It felt like it was in a lot of ways an homage to classic horror. They kind of went through a bunch of the different standard things that you see in standard horror movies. But they did it so well and they worked it into an original plot with good acting and directing and writing in a way that it didn't feel overdone. It didn't feel overused. It actually felt fresh and original despite a lot of it having been done before. There was some stuff that you could probably say or think was corny or cheesy or just lame if it hadn't been executed as well as it had. There was certain situations, especially with Rebecca Hall, that her acting, Rebecca Hall is a fantastic actor. I, I love her. I think she's phenomenal. And in this, she acted so well and was so believable in certain situations that if it had been maybe anybody else, it would have felt silly or cheesy or lame. But because she was able to act so realistically and do it so well, it came across as either horrifying or compelling, depending on if it was a horror moment or a dramatic moment. That's another thing I should say, is this movie isn't necessarily orchestrated or formatted like a standard horror movie. There's parts of this that kind of almost felt like a drama, and it was in a good way, in a refreshing way, where right off the bat, you see her come home. At the beginning of the movie, you see her come to the home, walk in, and then it cuts to the music that you then later find out played at her wedding. You see it in a recording, but it doesn't feel like a horror movie in that moment. It's very well executed and just not feeling typical and not 
feeling overdone and cliche. And so, like I said, even when it is dabbling in the cliche, it, it does it well in a way that makes it feel new and well done and original. And I really just appreciate so much about that. And it's interesting because I did look at the director, I forget his name, David Bruckner, and he doesn't have any other like well-received movie to his name. So I, I almost wonder like, how did this happen? How did the stars align for this to go so well? And um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was just a particularly well-written script that he happened to get a hold of. I don't know if just it worked right with his skill set better than anything else he had done, or maybe it was the cast, or maybe it was just all of it together. And the cast, by the way, I mentioned Rebecca Hall already, and she was great, but the whole cast was very good. Von D. Curtis Hall is also in this movie, and I thought he was also particularly great. I think the cast as a whole was good, but Rebecca Hall and he were both uh, easily the two big standouts in this movie of just being really good and being able to fit their role well and make it feel even more compelling than maybe the script did because for Rebecca Hall's character she's just your standard female protagonist in a horror movie for the most part. There's a little bit of added depth, but not much. She's able to make it, though, feel like a fully fleshed out character and add a little bit to it with the little quirks and the little personality traits and the little things she adds to it. Vondi Curtis Hall, meanwhile, is another one of those typical roles that you see in a lot of horror films as being that older, sage, black character that you see like in The Shining or something like that, where he knows a little bit more than everybody else does, and there's a little bit something going Going on that you quite don't know I don't want to give anything away but like he knows a little bit more about what's going on once again that role is overdone that role is overplayed but he did it well he did it in a way that felt realistic and relatable and refreshingly accurate to just you know how normal people act and so it didn't feel like they were characters it felt like they were real people and that is partially the writing but it was also definitely just really good acting being able to take this writing that was good and elevate it a little bit further so yeah this movie to me was really good and I wasn't expecting that so if you saw the trailer and you're like I don't know how you're gonna say that that trailer was for a movie that you're saying is this good I didn't believe it either I was not expecting this either I actually saw Chris Stuckman tweet like last week or something about the night house saying that it is all that horror should be and just praising it beyond anything that I expected and I was like okay Chris what are you talking about it didn't look that good and I may honestly not have tried to see it as soon as I did or maybe not even at all if not for his recommendation and I saw it and he was right this was far better than anything that I would have expected based on the trailer I don't think it's going to get nearly the recognition that it's that it deserves because people are I think watching the trailer and going yeah I feel like I already saw that movie I've seen movies like this before I can pass on that. Entertaining trailer, but eh, I'm good. Like literally, I saw this movie, there was only one other guy in the entire theater. It's only been out a week, and there was only one person in the theater, so I I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't think this movie's going to get quite the recognition it deserves. Like, it's got a good rating. It has a 7.0 on IMDb, and I think a 68% on Metacritic, which is fair. I would give it a seven, maybe a seven and a half, which you have to take into account genre with these ratings. I feel like horror and comedy, there's a couple of different genres that the ratings overall are a little bit lower than like a drama. Dramas much more often can have high ratings because they're much more easily accessible to a lot of people. All kinds of people can relate to something like a drama. It's a lot more objective, whereas horror and comedy is much more subjective. So to me, being a seven or a seven and a half like I would give this movie in horror that's really good I mean that's good for any movie but especially for something like a horror a seven and a half is very good but anyway we're a little bit off topic this movie was good <laughs> I enjoyed this movie a lot it was it was good <laughs> it was good I enjoyed it it's not perfect I don't want to say that either obviously I've always got my criticisms and like I just said a seven and a half is good but it's not perfect there was some parts of it that I felt were a little bit uneven. There was one scene in particular where Rebecca Hall and her friends go out to a bar, her coworkers go out to a bar, and that scene was incredibly awkward acting-wise. Now, they were all drunk, 
they were supposed to be drunk in that scene and I think different characters were able to manage that at different levels like I thought Rebecca Hall's character was extremely uncomfortable but in a realistic way some people when they're drunk a lot of people when they're drunk are just really uncomfortable to be around if you're sober so as a viewer being sober you're watching this getting really uncomfortable and I thought Rebecca Hall pulled that off perfectly flawlessly her character is drunk multiple times in this movie and I thought she did it very convincingly which is often harder than you think it doesn't seem to be that often that in movies people are drunk accurately it's kind of just that oh, yeah, I'm drunk of course I'm drunk and it's like okay that's what everybody does when they're being drunk the other actors in that scene weren't as convincing they weren't bad but it just that scene kind of felt a little bit not as good as the rest of the movie. And there was a couple of scenes that were like that in this movie where I wouldn't say there was any bad scenes in this movie, but there was a couple of scenes that just felt not quite as good. And that brings me to the ending. I'm not gonna spoil anything here. I'll get into spoilers in a minute, but ending in horror is the hardest part to accomplish. You could argue that that's the same way for all movies, uh, especially like things like comedies, that the ending is the hardest part. But definitely true for horror, the ending is the hardest part, and that's where a lot of people ruin their story. You just look at Stephen King. How many great stories did he have that were completely ruined by the ending? I don't want to say that the ending of this was bad at all. It wasn't. It really wasn't. But there was a rough transition period, I feel like, from moving from the middle, just the, the core of this story, to the ending. I thought the ending was an amazing payoff. I loved the ending, but there was a bit of a tripping hazard in the middle trying to get there. It just felt like it got caught up a little bit. Like I just said, I don't want to say any of this movie was bad, because I didn't think any one moment of this movie was bad, but that part just wasn't quite as good as everything else. And those are my only criticisms. You know me, I love to criticize things. There's only a couple of minor complaints in this movie. There's really not anything to hate in this movie. There's a lot to love in this movie. I don't think everybody will resonate with it as much as I did because it is, like I said, horror is very subjective. To me, stuff like this creeps the crap out of me. Like, I <laughs> tonight's gonna be rough in the bedroom alone, you know? You're gonna be seeing stuff out of the corner of your eye all night. At least I know that's how I am. That's not how everybody's going to be affected by this movie, but for me, I know that this movie was extremely well done, even with like the jump scares, this is the typical things they were well timed they weren't all really predictable there was some that I felt like I was going to be able to do like the five four three two one jump scare countdown and I actually did it to myself under my breath a couple times and I was wrong with the timing they were able to mix up the timing and change some things and even in some of those times that I was like oh here comes the jump scare and start counting down there was no jump scare and it wasn't that there wasn't anything creepy that happened in that scene but it went in a different direction than I expected in that moment. So it was well written, well directed. I just, there was so much <laughs> to love about this movie. So I can't recommend it enough. Like I said, it's not for everybody, but if you like this genre of horror, you will like this movie. It's definitely better than the average horror movie that you get every year on in, in October. And I think that's why they didn't put it out in October. I think they wanted to differentiate it as like, this is, an actual movie. This isn't just your two dollar horror throwaway movie. This is an actual film. And it was. It really was. So that's why I do think spoiler free. I'm gonna get into spoilers for a little bit here. I don't know how much I'm gonna talk about it, but if you want to sit here and listen to me talk about spoilers, get a few things spoiled, then stick around. But if you don't want anything spoiled, you want to go see it first, please do. It is good. But also please remember to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe first. Thanks guys. Bye. So spoilers. Um, yeah, so the whole thing with the premise of the movie, according to the trailer, is that there is a mirrored house, like there's a mirrored reality. And so you can come up with all kinds of easy solutions to that of like, oh, well, the invisible person attacking her is just the version of her husband from the other side, like the mirrored house, and you just can't see each other in the mirrored house. That's kind of what I was thinking. That's not the case at all. The whole mirrored house thing isn't really real. Like there is another house, but it isn't, you know, actually 
fully built up. There's not alternate versions of people. And in fact, I don't know how much of this movie even actually happened. And that's the cool thing about this movie is it has you constantly guessing, is this all happening? Actually, is this actually the occult? Is this actually uh, some sort of spiritual thing happening? Or is she just going crazy? And I think to me, how I interpreted it at the end of the movie is that none of it actually happened and it was just her having a depressive suicidal episode. She already mentions at the beginning of the movie that she was suicidal and depressed and then her husband kills himself so then she goes into a dramatic spiral of course and so to me how I interpreted the ending is that her husband or whoever he's supposed to be, there's like this nothing that she thinks is her husband, whether it's death, whether it's the nothing, whether it's whatever, that is her suicidal thoughts, that is her depression, that is uh, whatever you want to interpret that as. That's also why I compared it to the Babadook, because it's the same kind of idea. It's a, well, not a mother in this case, but a mother in that case, but a wife dealing with the death of her husband and kind of blaming herself in this, in the Babadook, it's blaming the son, but kind of herself. But anyway, there's a lot of crossover in the thought here. The Babadook is of course a classic though. This I wouldn't regard as a classic, but it was a very good movie. But anyway, I'm getting off topic again. How I took it is that's everything that's happening is all just kind of her mental health collapsing around her and it was really powerful to me the ending of this movie because she is going through one reality of dealing with what she sees as her husband but knows is actually the nothing trying to convince her to kill herself to be with her husband again so they're sitting in a boat where he killed himself her husband killed himself in his boat in the middle of the lake with a pistol so now they're both sitting in the boat in the middle of the lake with a pistol and he hands it to her and she's getting ready to kill herself but the night before she had called her best friend and left a message and her best friend shows up frantically searching for her because the message was a bit scary and then she sees her on the lake she swims out to the middle of the lake to get her out of the boat and saves her life. And that moment was so powerful to me. That, oh, if you've ever dealt with any sort of mental health, whether you or somebody you know, or depression, suicide, any of that, that scene, it, it's, it brought tears to my eyes. It was powerful, it was emotional, and it's something that you don't really see in horror. It was, beyond anything that I've seen in these crappy horror movies we get every year. And even in the good horror movies that we've been getting recently, like I always point out, Midsummer or the Jordan Peele movies, even those, they don't have an emotional punch like that. The Babadook is really good, but I still wouldn't say it was as emotional. The subject matter is similar, but the interpretation, the execution wasn't as emotional as it was in this. That's why... I love this movie so much. There's there's a lot of things you can point out with like, like I was saying with the jump scares, they were well done. The overall idea of it, the the confusing way that the story unfolds and you're like, you never know where it's going. All of that is true. All of that is great. The acting also, all of it. But what really stuck out to me was the emotional impact of the revelation of what this was all actually really about. It's not about some creepy ghost man trying to kill you. It is about the inner demons trying to kill you. They don't really specify exactly, but how I took it was, they say that she was in a car crash as a teenager and died momentarily. Her heart stopped for four minutes. And then at, when she came back, that's when the nothing came with her. And so the nothing, which you could also call her depression or suicidal thoughts, had been with her ever since. And she took all of that and kind of put it on her husband day after day after day after day. Eventually, it just was too much for him and then he killed himself. And she blames herself for that. There's a whole lot of things that you still don't know how much of it's true, how much of it isn't, like his involvement in the, the occult, you would assume that was true, and then him murdering other other women because he literally goes insane if that actually did happen which once again it's up to your interpretation but how I take it is he did literally go insane and started killing people that looked like her 
as a way of coping with his insanity and he was part of the occult and all that like all of that is up to your interpretation but it is a very emotional story regardless because it's about just the effects of mental health and how we affect the people around us and how we blame ourselves for it for everything and it's just I really enjoyed it I really did now like I said not everybody will relate to it as much not everybody will be moved as much by it uh, it is very subjective it's a very subjective type of movie the material is very subjective but for me and for anybody that's interested in that kind of story oh it's good it was really good that's all I really had to say about the spoilers but man I really enjoyed this story I really enjoyed the execution as well so that's what I did think. If you liked the movie, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought, or if you didn't like it either. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Please remember to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.